Welcome in to Fantasy Unclean. I'm your host, Rich Fiddler, running remote today, but joined as always by Scott Robley and Frodo Carvel. Gentlemen, aside from the obvious, how are we doing this evening? <laughs> um, I am doing great because I'm the only undefeated team in the AFC. Oh, yeah, you're one of three. That's uh, true. Yeah. Dolphins are one of three undefeated teams right now. Two, because the, the Giants came back down to earth and sucked like usual. Oh, right. Yeah. They got beat by the Cowboys. They made the Cowboys look good. That's how bad they played. That's bad. That's real bad. That's real bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, uh, real quick, uh, my dog died. Uh, and it was really sad. And uh, so that's why they're like, hey, besides the obvious, um, uh, my homie died. Uh, he's been, he's probably, uh, besides my wife uh, and besides Rick, he's probably my oldest friend. Um, not probably, he is. And uh, for like the first time in my adult life, I don't have this dog uh, hanging out with me every day. And it's very sad. And. Um, I'm using uh, my fantasy football uh, as my like life saving, my life raft right now because not only did I win both of our main leagues, uh, but I got to beat Rick in uh, our 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 main main league, and that was really satisfying because uh, he had like the second highest points in the in the league, uh, but had a had, you know just had that devastating loss to the highest point score that week in me. I, I, I... Just so you know, I went against the highest scoring in two out of my three leagues. <laughs> okay, that is the way. so so that actually brings up a pretty good. That's a pretty good little segue right into our opening topic, I guess. Uh, w- w- what do you do if you're own three? Like, like we're we're through the first part of the the first leg. We're getting close to waivers. Um, how do you bounce out of a? Uh, uh, a, a, a bad start, a, 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 a one and two or an own three start. Well, I, 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 I am zero and three in one league and one and two in my other two leagues. Uh, this is not abnormal for me. Uh, I I start slow every year and I tinker with my team until I put something together. The thing that's throwing me off is with the way, like I normally am like majorly running on running back scoring, but with the way running backs have been this year, right? I don't know where to go. I mean, there's no. I mean, obviously, there's you, you, there's fill in for injured players. You have Jamal Williams filling in for uh, DeAndre Swift. You have Khalil Herbert filling in for uh, David Montgomery. And you have Alexander Madison filling in for Dalvin Cook. Two of those three could play. Yep. And it could be uh, it, it could be all three of those players play after this week. So it's really, there's no, and outside of that, there's no good running backs to pick up. Oh, not really. Like, there's nothing. There's nothing out there. Every every running back is underperforming in the grand scheme of things. Right. And this Outside is... of, I guess, Saquon Barkley because of where people got him. Right. The expectation versus the reality. Um, and, right. And uh, so so he's the one that you're not super disappointed on. Um, the uh, I, I guess to your point, I mean, the, the, the benefit of being – 0-3 is waiver priority, right? I mean, that's the whole point of having mm-hmm. a waiver system is to uh, balance out the league. Now, if you have a fab, if you're one of those leagues that runs a fab, uh, this is the downside of the fab is now the guy that's 0-3 is in the exact same position as the guy that's 3-0 and in terms of waiver priority. So, Other than you still get waiver priority, waiver priority if you offer the same amount right so it's the second right. it's the second place uh it's the tiebreaker uh between uh, uh between the highest bid so if everybody puts all of their chips in you know everybody put 100 bucks in on uh you know khalil herbert if he's still out there um uh, uh the, the guy in last place is gonna get him um so that's that's the uh, that's the shitty part is, you know, of a of a fab, is that 
there, the balance there, it, 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 there's less of a balance there than uh, than there would be in a standard draft league or in a standard league where waiver it's reverse order of standings where the guy in last place is first place on the waiver wire and that's that's the guy that's going to be looking for Khalil Herbert going to be looking for Jamal Williams I mean you know these um but to your point I guess is the waiver wire is your number one uh target right or your number one priority in terms of how to write your league write your team one of your teams is uh, has two bad beats on it already, right? Like yeah. that's bad. Like that's just bad luck. You're, you're you're high scoring, but you're playing the higher scorer of the week. That's terrible luck. <laughs> but so so you don't have a lot of tweaking to do there. You just need the ball to bounce your way a little bit more. But in the other one, you need to you need to make some changes. So. One way is the waiver wire. Another way is, of course, trading. And trading is such a smaller aspect in redraft leagues. Um, but in Dynasty, for sure, that's where you're really trying to uh, trying to find something. Um, but but redraft, how do you how do you go about putting together a trade package for a redraft league? You, you gotta I mean, take- one would be capital. If you have anyone who overperformed the, you know, the new hotness, mm-hmm. try to move them for something steady because you, you're you're looking for someone that is going to average out so you can plan out some wins to start getting your players that maybe underperformed or hurt back. So you know by week six, maybe you're two and four instead of zero oh and six. Right. Right, and uh, uh, this is where you really start looking at schedules as well. You start looking to trade for players. Me personally, one of my favorite tactics is to trade for players that are about to go on a bye week Um, because uh, the value to the other person is so low at that point because they know that they're getting an egg from that person this week. So uh, uh, bye week starts Especially if they've already gone on a bye week. Right. What do you mean? Sorry. If if you are trading somebody, oh, that if your player that you are trying to trade away has already been on a bye week, and you're right. trading for a player that has a bye week coming up in the next two weeks, yep, you get to say, hey, you're getting a free week out of this player. Right, right, because because everybody else in the league only plays 17 games, uh, but you're but there's uh, uh, but you get to have a full 18 week schedule or whatever it is in terms of uh fantasy football uh so that's a huge tactic for me as we start approaching the uh uh the bye weeks uh, which is i think what week six through 12 is bye weeks i think so 14 14. okay so um yeah so so that's a that's a big piece there uh what else can you do in terms of your own three teams well, so like something that I've always gone for, um, which you start seeing after a few weeks, is uh, players that are getting like consistent work. Uh, okay. Maybe not being a top scoring player, yeah. but players that are getting a consistent work, uh, and that's what I've always liked more than the boom bust players. And that's why once I can get my my, my team into kind of a a rhythm after that week two, three, four area. Yeah. I can generally start laying my team out in a better way and I can play my bench players in certain spots based off of matchups and that sort of thing. Because you start to see you start to see, oh, this yeah. team's weak against tight ends or this this team's weak against running backs. Uh, we now have enough data where we can start playing that a little bit, where you can start, where it's not just, do we have good players on defense and do we have a good defensive coach like uh, Harbaugh? It, it's it's more about this team in particular gives up a lot, of, uh, a lot of passes to the middle. So your slot receiver and your tight ends are going to be, uh, uh, are going to be your targets for that for that team, and so that's that's the trick to streaming throughout this this next part of the uh, this next leg, right? As you try to climb out of your hole, yeah. And especially like 
not paying attention to projected points and paying attention to matchups more than projected points because projected points will mean literally nothing it is a complete guess it is uh, yeah. and it's one of the worst things i wish there wasn't anything there because you have players that will consistently be marked at like uh like Devonte adams when he was yes. in his like prime playing with uh with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. He was projected like 18, 19 points every week, yep. at least. Yep. And and if your player doesn't hit that, that kills your score. Kills your so overall you just score. See, so yeah, your probability yeah, you goes down. You just see this big yeah. negative because of it, because somebody is projected so much. Whereas I like those players that are in that, that 13, 14, 15 point range, because I may be a, I may be the underdog going into a game, but I, I I'm pretty sure my player that I'm putting in in place of that right. is, uh, is going to get some consistent points. Now, obviously, I'm not saying don't play Devonte Adams. Right. I'm right. saying, I'm saying, don't worry about your projected points because they're literally just a projection of what could happen. And and right, and right now, while your projected points is going to be a good barometer to how to automatically set your team you can uh like often what i'll do is i'll build my team out based on projected points and then i'll go back through and i'll sweep for matchups and that's when i'll bump a guy out that's at 12 points a projected 12 points for a guy that's projected eight points because i like the matchups better um or or uh, i should have done that this last week and i didn't and it bit me in the ass because i kept somebody in that was projected more points and the player that I didn't put in scored a touchdown, and DJ Moore did jack shit. Right. Uh, and Zeke is one of those guys that is always, for the last two years, every week, it's 15 to 20 points a week that he's projected, and he puts up 8 to 12. And then every once in a while, he'll put up a 20-point game. So, you know, the the projected points is, is bullshit, and you have to just know... Uh, uh, that that is all that is is you got to think of those as a tier. Um, this is uh, you know your your quarterbacks, all your quarterbacks that are hitting twenty points. Um, that's like tier three quarterback level. Tier uh, the guys that are projected twenty to twenty three, twenty four. That's tier two. And then the tier ones are the guys that are projected twenty four and up. You know things like that. But you you can't just expect those points you have to uh you have to be able to start playing your matchups and things like that um and and, and honestly the, the same goes for if you're three and oh if you're three and oh you cannot sit back and just hope that the that you're going to ride out this uh the rest of the way um you know three and oh is honestly it's one of the harder spots to play because you're at the beginning of the season you now that you've got a couple of weeks in and you see how the landscape is shaping and you realize that your value your your high end blue chip running backs are not going to be performing the way that you were supposed that they were supposed to that's where all your draft capital is but you've got a couple of wins you know maybe maybe you're like me and and you're scoring a ton of points in one league or maybe you're like me in another league which is I'm not scoring a lot of points but I'm still 3 and 0 so I don't have uh a deep roster, but I also don't have waiver priority. So uh, that's mm-hmm. that's like that's like the that's, hardest. Position that's like to the be worst place to be in exactly. when you've gotten lucky. Yep. When you've gotten lucky to get your wins, and then you can't make any moves because you are at the very bottom of the waiver wire. So for those guys, um, often what I'm looking at for for something like that is I'm looking. Uh, uh, if you start three and zero, your odds of making the playoffs are super high. So now, what I start looking at is I start looking at players with good matchups in the playoff weeks. So instead of, you know, and then uh, it, figure if you catch if you catch ten wins in the season and you start out three and zero, now you've got to go another seven wins throughout. Or, and if you get another six or seven wins throughout the rest of this, the, the uh, uh, fantasy season, um, regular season, you're going to be in the playoffs, even if you're at the back end of the playoffs. But if you're able to actually uh, pick up some players... You, that can, have... you can afford to, co- to hurt your team in the short run mm-hmm. if it will benefit you in the long run. 
Absolutely. Right. And I think it's an often underlooked at tactic in terms of people who are three and O will often sit back and go, this is fucking easy. How come everybody's not doing like I'm doing? And, and I personally have learned this lesson the hard way a number of times because I am the opposite of Rick where I come out of the gate strong almost every year. And then I'm clawing my way into the playoffs where Rick is in like yeah. second place or first place by the time playoffs come around. So uh, uh, Rick has always been an in season, just fucking dominating player. Um, I mean, I, how many how many years have we gone against each other week one? Yep. And before we even get to week one, I'm telling you congratulations on, on your week we one We don't victory. do week one bets. We never do week one bets no. because it's pointless. Ricky's going to lose. Um, he's like uh, he's like Sammy Watkins. Like he, 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 well, I guess the opposite of Sammy <laughs> Watkins. He's absolutely dog shit for the first game. And then every other game, he's great. Sammy Watkins. Yeah awesome the first game and now is uh on ir um so uh speaking of injuries what else we got uh we've got a lot of injuries actually this this week speaking of blue chip running backs right yeah yeah it, it was a rough uh, week for some, some of them so uh dalvin cook is is still dealing with a torn labrum that he hasn't ever had repaired uh but He's been dealing with it for a really long time, so he knows how to play through it. Is the uh, labrum the thing that just... hangs down in the back of your throat? Uh, no. No, okay. All right. <laughs> um, What's a vulva? But he can, yeah. yeah. Uh, he can just uh, wear his shoulder harness, hopefully, and be just fine. Okay, uh, yeah. I mean, that's what he did against Pittsburgh last year, and then he scored, he ran like 200 yards and two touchdowns Right, this last is the year. thing that he that keeps happening to him, right? Yeah. Dislocated uh, again? It, yeah, it, basically, yeah, he keeps dislocating his shoulders, and it's both shoulders, so that's fun. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Uh, he basically turned he into... Apparently he doesn't need shoulders, so... <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, I mean, who needs he's stuff to hold the ball? Right, exactly. Yeah. He's dusty from Stranger Things. He's no collarbones anymore. He's just going to yeah. be. Yeah. But he, that means he gets to slide right through those holes, man. Like, nobody can grab him because he just kind of slips on through like an octopus. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, David Montgomery also went down uh, ankle and knee. Um, yep. he, he, he's he's going to miss a couple weeks, I think. Yeah, that's what we're hearing, right? So uh, Khalil Herbert has already been eating into his time. Um, and been looking good doing it. Uh, plus, and we with- know from past experience that he can he he can run this with this offense just fine. And he was and, great when David Montgomery was out last year. And let's not forget that during the uh, during the preseason, uh, the Bears uh, staff was talking about how they're not sure how David Montgomery is going to fit into this offense. Like, what the right. fuck, man? Like. It's David Montgomery. Well, now, now, now they're looking really smart. <laughs> Khalil Herbert is the only person I would want from the Bears. Only, only player. Yeah, uh, Justin Fields maybe as a uh, as a screamer from time to time. Uh, if in, you need him in desperation, because yep. he, he's not going to have any passing. Right, but he's going to get all the rushing. So uh, yeah. you figure if you can I, get I'm, two scores on the I'm, ground and I'd rather try. try, try and, Grab Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence if he's still floating out there. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, who else is uh, went down? Uh, DeAndre, DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift. Yeah, what happened to him? Uh, looks, looks like, like it was an ankle and shoulder for the both. Ankle from the week before, shoulder for the new one. And Dan Campbell came up and said it would be best. Probably he's going to miss probably a couple weeks. Jamal, You saw Jamal Williams just absolutely go ham. He, he, they love him there. He's a good running back. Yeah. And... Um, He's been really if he's fun not to watch on, on a, uh, if he's not on a roster, he is number one to pick up. I think. You think you'd rather have uh, Jamal Williams over Khalil Herbert? Right, right now, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they're at least doing something with the ball, uh, Scott. Just so you know, your your statement about making a flyer on Justin Fields from time to time. Yeah. Uh, his highest uh, weekly total mm-hmm. has been fourteen point six points. No, the next highest is eight. That's not Last week he had four point nine. I retract my previous statement. Uh, His highest attempts has been seventeen attempts in a game. 
Yeah, and before that, it was 11 and like 13 or something like that. Like, is this, is this is Justin Fields? Field? Yeah. Yeah, he said yeah. he's had two games with 17 attempts and two games with, or in one game with 11 attempts. Fuck, just dude. just in comparison, yeah. I mean, they're not the same, but uh, you know, Josh Allen had probably more passes in uh, in one game than the Bears do. Right. Right. All season. They they almost had more first downs in the game against Miami than uh, the Bears do. I saw you, you sent me that video and that's ridiculous. Yeah. Did did you send it to Scott? Uh, I think so. If he did, I haven't a, seen it yet. But. It is a TikTok. It said that, so through week three, the number one receiver in yardage is uh, Stephon Diggs. Number two is Jalen Waddle with like 390 yards. Number three is Tyree Kill. Number four, well, uh, who was it number four? I think Justin Jefferson or something like that. Number five was all of the Chicago Bears receivers combined. Wow. Like that's that's where wow. their offense falls in the list of top receivers. Receivers, yeah. That's fucking terrible, dude. Jesus, yeah. man. Do they just it's not fair. trust him over there? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know that they just... I just think they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to make a playbook. I mean, when you're literally only attempting 17 passes in games that you are trailing... Right. Right. Uh, I mean, that's the biggest deal, right? Like, game you're never gonna, said that you're never gonna win a game. is supposed to be in there. Game script just said that uh, 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 that Khalil Herbert should be in there getting all of these targets and getting all of these rushes and all of these attempts... And yet, um, it's not happening. It's just not yeah. happening. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's, nobody's throwing the ball over there. Uh, it, it's yeah. full, full panic mode for it. If you're a Bears fan, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. there was promise going into the season. That's all dissolved. Like, okay, after the first game, just like you know, with the Niners, you couldn't really judge them because that's oh, the thing. Trey Lance. That's the thing with everybody that was saying, oh, the, maybe the Bears are actually a good team. If you actually watched that game, the Bears played terrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, like, it was not a good game in any way whatsoever. Right. So, it's like it's like it, saying that the, the Seahawks were good bad. when they beat Russell Wilson. Right. Look, look back Looking on it. And now, now we've all figured out that Russell Wilson and the Broncos, there's something going on over there. And because mm-hmm. um, Russell Wilson, as much shit as I love giving him right now, is a great fucking quarterback. So the fact that they're not able to put it together there seems like an absolute tragedy. Um, in all fairness, they are in first in the AFC West. Yeah, but <laughs> no way not in our hearts. There. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> um, what's uh, 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 Michael Thomas? Speaking of panic, uh, Michael Thomas has turf toe. Um, so he's going to be out, uh, what, a couple of weeks at least? Uh, they're, 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 doing, he's, they're trying to say they, 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 they said toe injury, but from the sound of it, it sounded kind of like turf toe, which, okay. if, have you guys ever spread, when I first was getting into football, I'm like, turf toe, like, stop being a giant pussy and get out there. And then I sprayed my big toe. Right. That shit is no joke. Right. You know, they, like, you can walk. You cannot take off. You cannot no. give any force right. to it. Right, and right. and a lot of people uh, uh, that haven't been injured before, haven't been in, you know gravely injured before, don't know this. But sprains hurt more than broken bones. Obviously, I'm not talking about a fucking collarbone poking out your neck, but but you you, you break a foot, and that hurts. But you can cast it up, you can do it, whatever, and 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 you can actually kind of play through that pain, especially if it's not a structural, uh, uh, you know, problem like you know a broken wrist might be, um, you know, uh, you know, you break that scaphoid bone in the middle of your wrist, and while it's a pain, it's not that big of a deal. Um, however, uh, a sprained wrist. It, it, it hurts like hell. A sprained ankle hurts like hell. A sprained foot, toe, is a serious problem for somebody who needs to make all of these uh, quick adjustments, uh, push off all the time. Um, yeah, so so uh, he's been a little bit of a darling so far, uh, opening up the season with a couple of touchdowns, right? So 
It's kind of a bummer, but Chris Olave has just come alive in the last two games. Yeah, yeah except, except that, that the Saints offense has – that's it. Like, they is Chris Olave. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, there. That that's all. That's another team that I had high expectations for. I didn't have Super Bowl aspirations for, but sort of like the Bears, where I thought they were going to be able to put together some stuff this year, and then they just haven't been able to. Uh, yeah, but that, right. the Saints have been a little bit disappointing. Uh, Chargers are also beat to fucking shit, dude. Everybody's hurt over there. Is there anybody left? I mean, currently. Austin Eckler is not injured. Right. Correct. And that's it. Like, Because Guyton just went out with the ACL. You have Mike Williams, who's just a ticking time bomb because he, you know, he jumps he high. He always gets hurt, hard. at least throughout the season. Right. Josh Palmer and Gerald Everett are your most consistent, and Herbert is playing through the cartilage fracture or I had do you guys realize he, he dropped back 80% of his of his of the snaps this week the really? most of any quarterback wow. in, in 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 week 3 the dude with with broken cartilage in his chest was uh, like I, I god damn dude yeah i don't know so so um, uh, is and is speaking uh okay go ahead uh, 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 is Keenan Allen back this week? Do we know? Uh, he, let, let me see. Practice. Let's see an update on him. Yeah, he's starting to practice. One thing that will, will help the, the case for Chris Olave is that Michael Thomas and Landry got hurt in the game. So that's, it's going to push him his direction as yeah, well. Cause there's, um, I mean, there's, I mean, even if they don't throw a lot, they still have to throw to somebody and it's going to be Olave who is, Really fast out there, running really well. Yeah. So I don't uh, know where Kamara's gone. He's, he's been almost non-existent. Right, right. It's sort of like the uh, uh, the Saquon Barkley of uh, last year and the year before, where even you know when when he wasn't injured, that is, um, where they just aren't utilizing him the way that they should be utilizing him. Um, right. Yeah. Um, Tony he Pollard, didn't cough cough. Um, on a uh, on a different team, different note, because you didn't really have a lot of. Patriot fantasy options right. really starting on your team, but now you definitely don't want any of them because Mac Jones went down with a severe high ankle sprain. Looks like he, it looks like he, you just stabbed him by the the way he oh was. Oh my gosh! Like, like, like I know. I just, I just went on this 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 little rant about sprains hurting more than broken bones, but dude, like. He looked like somebody had just stolen his chocolate milk. Like, he was <laughs> so sad, so upset. He was... You just got your ice cream cone as a kid, and it dropped off the cone and on the ground. Yes. Yep. And you lost your balloon at the same time. At and the now same you're losing time. Yeah. And yet you still have to go on the uh, camping trip with your scout, scout leader this weekend. Like, it's all bad news for you. So... Uh, I don't know why uh, it, it, there is some sort of emotional trigger, I think, for him. You know, okay, so a couple years ago, Luke Keekley got uh, got hit uh, coming across the middle, got that nasty concussion that had him just uncontrollably sobbing in the middle of the f- field, and nobody thought that he was a bitch because it's Luke Keekley. Matt Jones right. looked the exact same way. And I I can't help it. He's a little bitch, man. That was terrible. Like, man up. That is not a that is not a tough leader of of your football team, man. I'd be very. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Cam Newton coming out there, uh, getting that, that high ankle sprain and 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 looking like that? No. It's also bad. It's also bad when the team says that it'll be full probably that at most four weeks. And the player is saying, no, it'll probably be six to eight weeks. God, he's just begging yeah. to go in, man. God, that's terrible. That's terrible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for the Chargers, they lost their left tackle, too. Um, Joey Bosa's out for a and couple of center. weeks. And their center. So they're just it's just all a mess over there. Um, speaking of they, trying They've to currently lost five Pro Bowl players. So if which, you, which team? 
Chargers. Chargers. Oh yeah, that 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 whole division, which looked so terrifying, has literally like it, it. They that division has turned into Jurassic Park Dominion for me. Like it went from like <laughs> it looks gonna be fucking fantastic, and I can't watch it because it's a complete shit show. Because all of a sudden there's giant fucking grasshoppers. And like, not, nothing makes sense. Like, you watch Hackett just fucking shit the bed and forget to call timeouts. And yeah. Raiders, you watch Raiders all are looking the like the AFC Raiders. South yeah. the yeah. AFC West. Yeah. 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 What the fuck, guys? Yeah. Get your shit together. We yeah. invest a, a lot, a lot of our fantasy capital in your division. And you guys are dropping the fucking ball, literally. All right? Get the fuck out of here. All right. Uh... <laughs> Let's uh let's talk uh this week. Do we have uh, uh we, you got your games? Oh, I guess uh, what are we uh uh, uh from, from last, last week? Yeah, yeah. yeah what do we, oh, uh, how do we do? So uh, Frodo ended with nine. Scott Yeehaw! ended with eight. I okay. ended with seven. Okay. So our current we our, our current totals through week three. I am sitting at twenty four. Frodo is sitting at twenty three. Scott is sitting at twenty two. All right, dude. Tight game so far. Good job, fellas. All so, right. Frodo, that means you are picking your picks first this week. Okay, uh, we it is not a stretch. Week. It is not a stretch for week four Thursday night game. It's who you are picking because Miami is playing. So I know you are picking Miami. Okay. Yes. Let's get right into this. Four. I did want to. Miami. I... Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Nope, go ahead. Okay, Miami is going against Cincinnati. And currently, Cincinnati is four-point favorites. Just give me Dolphins every day of the week because, you know what, they say, you know, Tua has a bad, uh, is a, has it hurt back in Toronto Armstead has a toe, but they're, they're going to play. None of the major players are going to miss that game. It's a short week. They're, McDaniels just taught, watched his press conference today saying that they're doing everything they can for him to get out there. He's was a limited, would speculate a limited participant today. It's an important game. You want to go for no because the Bills are playing the Ravens and have every chance of losing that game too. You want to shut everyone up, and I think they're going to come out and and play. They don't have to necessarily, like, you know, light the world on fire because what the Bengals have a hard time doing is stopping a pass rush. And, and the, the Dolphins, Dolphins got to jo- Josh Allen, and they're a good offensive line a lot in that game. Yeah, I'm, w- I'm with know. you here. Uh, Miami is going to own this game. And and I don't think, even with an injured Tua, I don't think that uh, the uh, Bengals have enough to stop both Waddle and Hill. Did you see that Hill, Hill's postgame was, he was, like, he was like, oh, Bengals? He was like, Eli, I owe you one. Like, he, he has a grudge against Eli Apple from the game last year at the end. Yeah. Like, they tw- Eli Apple tried to start some Twitter beef or something, and he wasn't have. Hill was like, no, we're not going to do that. I'll just own it in the game. And then I was watching the press conference from Tua, and he's like, he's all honestly, he's like, he's like, if I see a single coverage on Hill, or, or he said 10, or on 17, he's like, if, if, if there's if they're going to show me single coverage and they're going to keep single coverage on ten, I'm going to ten. That's yeah. that that's not a, that's that's a no brainer. You put single coverage on Terry Kill, he's going to win ninety nine point nine percent of the time on that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think we're all taking the Dolphins here, right? Yeah, yeah, we all are. Yeah, um, uh, I no, wouldn't feel comfortable starting a lot of the Bengals, except for maybe Jamar Chase and or like. Uh, 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 Joe Mixon. Oh, Mixon's Mixon's uh, hurt too. Mixon's hurt too. I didn't. I for, oh, completely that, forgot about that's that. That's what I was yeah. gonna say. Is is we got to talk about Joe Mixon? We forgot about him. I had him on my list. I yeah, just so, skipped so right past him. P. P. Ryan. Uh, now I think Mixon's gonna play. So, it, but I mean, he could. I, I don't even know what his injury was. Uh, ankle, I believe it was, which he's had ankle injuries in the past, and to the point where P. Ryan had a, quite a, a a substantial workload, snap count, and workload in that game. Yeah, yeah. So it could be a good week for P. Ryan, um, but I think the Bengals are going to be one three after this game. Could be. 
So. Uh, next up, we have the uh, first international game. We've got Minnesota uh, going against the uh, home team of New Orleans in London. So this is, uh, I think, an 8 a.m. or an 8.30 a.m. start time on the like East that, Coast. Yeah. It, is, it is a 6.30 a.m. start time. On the, on the Pacific Coast? Yep. Yeah, I'm, so, yeah. I'm taking the Vikings here because it is the exact opposite of a primetime game, and Kirk Cousins is going to light the shit up. Like, there, there, there's yeah, not, almost no one's going to be watching the game. New Orleans, I don't think New Orleans has enough. I feel like this is going to be a good bounce back for Justin Jefferson in this one. Yeah. What's the spread right now? Minnesota two and a half. Yeah, give me Minnesota. Pretty tight. Um, yeah, Minnesota. I don't, I don't, I, yeah. I got to make ground you on you guys, Orleans. but I can't, but I can't. I mean, you can. You can try and make ground up on this game. I'm, I'm fine with it. You're not gonna trap me here, homie. Uh, you get, you guys will get me. Don't worry. I'm gonna. I, I, I always go on more islands than you guys. But the island boy. I, the the island island boy. boy. I think that's the problem. Is so far we've all been pretty equal on our islands. I know. You guys keep fucking me over, man. That's how I get ahead of you guys. <laughs> All right, so next up, we've got Cleveland going to Atlanta. Cleveland is one-and-a-half-point favorites. This is an interesting game because the Browns have played for decent. They should really be 3-0 if they didn't just absolutely foobar the end of oh, the Jets game. Hey, just real quick, I don't want uh, – sorry to interrupt, but uh, going back to the Vikings-Saints game – this is you need to treat this effectively like a Thursday game where you got to put these guys in yep. your uh, in your non flex spots uh, if you can. Yep. So that way you can wake up, up and they're exactly because but when you wake up they're already going to be halfway done with their game. So uh, so treat them like a Thursday night player. Have them set, but have them put in your uh, running back or your uh, wide receiver position, not in your flex if you can. Uh, All right. All right, yeah, anyway, this sorry. game will pretty much be be over before all the morning games start, the early game right. slot Especially if you have someone questionable, like, you know, you have Mixon or um, someone who's kind of borderline. Yeah. Just, yeah, dead. don't don't bank your, your stuff on that. Have some flexibility. Yeah. So, back to the... The Falcons have played a lot better than I thought they would. They've been fairly competitive in most games mm-hmm. this season. Um... The Browns have too. The Browns really should be three and zero, but without you know, like I said, fucking up that last, but the last with game. the Falcons. With regard to the Falcons, they played New Orleans, the Rams, and Seattle, and um, all of Not those teams scary. are have been uh, disappointments, save for Seattle, w- which can't be a disappointment when you expect them to go fucking five wins on the season. So. Uh, right. But even, but even, but the Falcons were supposed to be one of those wins, right? So, so, uh, and, and they won. So, uh, well, what is the spread on this? Uh, Cleveland by one and a half. But wow. we do have to remember, we do have to remember here, uh, Jadavian Clowney was out last week. Miles I don't Garrett know if on. he's going to be back this week. Miles Garrett is. I don't think we'll play this week. So there's not much of a pass rush unless they've got a lot of backup players that are all of a sudden going to be stepping up for this team. I, I think they played a ball control with, with Chubb and Hunt. I'm going to take the Browns on this. Um, I think it's like going to be like by like three or – it's going to be less than a touchdown, but I think they, 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 they get a win by like a field goal. Like, you know, be like – yeah. 21 like 24 21 or something like that rick who are you taking um i'm tempted to take the falcons here i'm trying to see who's over there uh they are uh in uh, atlanta yeah, they're in Atlanta. I'm taking the Falcons. Yeah, I'm going to take the Falcons as well. I don't 
I, I have bet against Cleveland every game this year, and I just don't want to go over them yet. <laughs> He's not ready I, I yet. Get, I get to be on the island. There you go. First island boy, I think. Yes. All right. But I just can't, can't do it. I, I just can't. I can't. I, I can't root for them in any way whatsoever. Um. Next up, we've got a, a, another good game. Uh, we got Buffalo going against Baltimore. Oh fuck! What's the over under on this game? Oh yeah, dude, that's gonna uh, be giant. I didn't actually even look at the over under. The uh, the the Bills are currently three point favorites. Oh god, I'm this game is checking. so okay. I'm gonna take the Ravens. They're at home. Their defense isn't that good, but their offense is just fantastic. And the Bills are, are really beat up right now. Like, really, really, really beat up. Uh, they are. I, I think the Ravens are going to... This could be like... A, like Ravens might be the best team right now because of the Bills' defensive injuries. They lost offensive players. They lost defensive players. Lost more on there. Like, Dawson Knox got his, the shit wrung out of him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did you see that? The over under is 52 points. Yeah, uh, that's what yeah. I'm going to. Um... This is, I think, the third time that Lamar Jackson has been a uh, an underdog at home, um, and I, I I'm with you, Frodo. I'm gonna take the Ravens. I like it. All right, I'm gonna take Buffalo. I'm taking Buffalo purely on the fact that the Ravens. Yes, uh, I I agree with what you are saying. Um. But the Ravens haven't been winning their games either by a lot yeah. or at all. At like, all. like obviously against the, uh, the against Miami. Yeah. I mean, they let Patriots score twenty six points and they only scored thirty seven. Patriots. I mean, the defense is okay, but they're not anything great. Nope. So to only have an eleven point game in that. The Bills are a much better team than the Patriots, even injured. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm gonna take I, I, I'm gonna take Buffalo. I just think it's their their offense can keep up. It's gonna be a shootout. That's why in in, in my parlay I took the over. Uh, uh, fifty one or fifty two points? You said, yeah. No, yeah. It, it, when I when I bet it was fifty one and a half. So. Yeah, that's what, uh, I feel. that's what I looked at was uh, 51 and a half, but yeah. Yeah, currently it's at 52, so it's clearly gotten bet up a little bit. Yep. Um, next up, we've got the Washington Commanders. Commies. Going up against the Worst Dallas name Cowboys. Ugh. The, uh, 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 oh, uh, fuck, I just forgot the kid's name. What's the, what's the quarterback's yeah. name? Cooper Rush. Cooper, Cooper Rush. Rush. Three and O. Cooper Rush. I mean, goddamn, dude. dude That's a start. Dallas is three point favorites. Um, ugh. I okay, say, I'm, ugh. I, I'm gonna, gonna take Commanders on this because I hate the Cowboys. Yeah. That's it. That's that's. that's I, I, I I really want to see Carson Wentz's face on. On that the, the the meme the cowboy meme, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I just I I just don't I don't see the commanders beating them. As much, much as I wanted to, I don't know. It might, might be just a loss, but uh, I, I can't take cowboys. Ugh, I don't like this one, guys. Um... And if I, and no one else likes it either, unless you're Cowboys. And it's pretty fan. much it's pretty much an even an even spread because Dallas is three point home favorites, so it's not like it's anything crazy. Why does it feel like we're barreling and, towards a push on this one? Like it, it's gonna be like Dallas is gonna win. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. And the uh, over under is forty one and a half. All right, I'll take Dallas on this, but I don't feel good about it. Oh, I don't either. I hate taking the Cowboys on anything. I know you do. You really do. You get that 49er blood in you, man. You bleed red. Just like, you know, the rest of us. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, next up, I, I'm curious on this one. Uh, we've got Seattle traveling to Detroit. Detroit is four and a half point favorites. So uh, I have to go first on this. Yeah. And yeah. when I bet it, the Lions were minus six, and I took the Lions because I don't <laughs> think Geno Smith might have to start writing letters because I don't think they win this game. Um, would it change your mind if Drew Locke was starting? <laughs> I would take minus 10 if Drew Locke started. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> but you beat Russell Wilson. Eh, we That's beat all Russell Wilson. Yeah. But then my dog hey, died, so fairness, at what cost, you know? In all, in all <laughs> fairness, sacrifice that. Seattle is the only reason that Russell Wilson is not an undefeated team right now. Goddamn right. God damn right. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate He's, that. Uh, I, I reiterate, he is the quintessential just cringe. Like, if you look up a cringe in the dictionary, his it, face is Russell right Wilson. next to it. Because, I mean, he's just all over the board. And then, like, his play is not great. I know we're not talking about the Browns right now, but I was watching, um, uh, what's his name that came on the podcast? Yeah, um, uh, Jenkins. Jenkins. And he's breaking down these, is it time to panic? And like, all these misthrows and underthrows and uncharacteristic stuff, he, he is 100%, like, he's playing like he did when he came back from his thumb injury and just, like, bleh. Right, and, and, you know, we talked about the Russell Wilson and the Tyler Lockett uh, chemistry and how... Uh, and how important that was. And yet, Tyler Lockett put himself up a couple of good games now. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, with with Geno Smith. Whatever, we're not talking about that. Um, so, uh, uh, you said four-point favorites, the Lions? Four and a half point. All right, I'll take Seahawks. I'll, 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 I'll take them to lose by sure. less than four. Oh, this, I, I love whoever made this picture. I, I, I need to get. I'd send them like. I just send it to you guys. It's fucking plat, plat, crap. <laughs> <laughs> fucking my fucking no, phone is great. across the room. I can't see it, dude. <laughs> no, that's fine. So You'll then, enjoy that when you get off the pod. Yeah. yeah. Did you uh? Did you go ahead and take uh? Lions. Yeah, I'm taking. I'm taking Detroit. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, next up, we've got the aforementioned uh, injury-prone Chargers yep. going up against the Houston Texans. Chargers are currently five-point favorites. Oh, that gets wild, man. I, I, I think I, I did place a bet on this. This was part of my parlay. Let me see here. See here. See here. Uh, was it? Or maybe I avoided it. Oh, I did avoid it. Um, it's hard to say because the Chargers did not look on like paper. Good Chargers should destroy Houston. Yeah, and on with paper. Bosa out, and they still on JC Jackson, and it's five points. Yeah, Fuck. I'm gonna take Texans. I think they can keep it close. I don't think they win, but Texans plus five is. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel proud, proud of that pick. Mm -mm. No, you shouldn't. Uh, Rick, who are you taking? I'm taking Chargers. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do, but you went ahead and did it. Uh, yeah, let's put Frodo on an island. Fuck it. Fuck that guy. All right. Love, Love you, bud. <laughs> uh, Frodo's now on an island in three different games. Yeah, he is. He's either going to be way ahead of us or... And Scott and I are e each on a single island so far. Uh, next up, we've got oh, Tennessee man. traveling I'm on an to with Seattle only. That sucks. Yep. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Tennessee traveling to Indianapolis. Indy is three point favorites. Ah. Oh wait, no, I'm not supposed to take first. What is? This is one of those games where, like, you were just like, oh, this is going to be some 
fireworks and how they're playing this year it's like two blind guys trying to make their way down a well because indy shouldn't have won the game indy won that game based off of a bullshit call and bad special teams yep from the chiefs yeah um and, and tennessee got a win who did they play they beat the raiders which Raiders could yeah, have we, don't, we don't know if the Raiders are just complete garbage or not. They're all uh, in three. They're the only zero and three team in the league. And the and the Colts are what favorites? Uh, three point favorites. You know the one one and one Colts. Yeah, give me. Uh, I'm gonna take the Titans. God, I really uh, wish that the Colts weren't favorites. Right. Yeah. Gross, man. Um. The, the Colts just look bad. Jonathan Taylor can't do anything. That that O line has changed from last year to this year. Yeah. They, oh, like, yeah. 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 Big time. Like it's, um, and, and they it's lost the most. Of, one. It's the most expensive. Well, the Titans did. Say that again? What? What are we talking yeah. The Titans lost uh, Taylor Lewan. Oh, yeah. Right. But I'm saying the Colts have the most expensive O-line in the league. Yep. Hmm. So, for I what it's know. worth, though, Derrick Henry, they finally started using Derrick Henry, right? I mean, he got a bunch yeah. of carries. Uh, he had uh, 4.25 yards per carry. He finally got some targets. He had five catches for 58 yards. Um, I assume that they have decided that they like to play as Derrick Henry now. They, they've decided that they don't want to be Titans. They want to be the uh, Tennessee Derrick Henry. And they've gone back to the Tennessee Derrick Henrys. Right, and, and, and it did snow in uh, Vermont, right? So the Yeti is back. Right. And uh, so, Derrick, I, I'm taking the Titans. All right, I'll go Justin on an snow. island with the Colts. I think the defense can, can do enough. Uh, that Matt Ryan won't completely fuck it all up. We'll see if that holds true or not, but... Yeah. I don't feel good about it, but I wouldn't feel good about going with the Titans either in this game. Right. It's just like, ugh. Uh, next up, we've got just a absolute juggernaut of a game with Chicago going up against the New York Giants. The New York Giants are three-point favorites. God. Um, I think that this game is going to be fucking ugly. I don't want to see any bit of this game. I, I, I 100% took the under on it, and it's not like even a high over-under. Um... Uh, is there oh, anything the Giants just real what quick? Again? I know that I know that I know that we talked about injuries already, but is there anything to Sterling Shepard? Does anybody care? That, no, um, you know, I, I didn't want any part of receiving core of the Giants to begin with. Right, right. I just thought that you know I mean, losing he was those the primary target though, so and so those the bad, targets the need to name. shift to somebody else. Um, so that, yeah, they're it, gonna it, shift to Galladay, and he's gonna throw it on the ground every time it comes near him. Yeah, yeah. he'll cry about it, and then. Uh, I mean, I still want Saquon Barkley, right? I mean, uh, it, but that's yeah. about all you want, I think. Yeah, that's it. And, and uh, on the Chicago side, Khalil Herbert, and we're done talking about that game. Basically, yeah, you want the running backs in these games, and that's it. Um, I will take the Giants because I don't think Chicago can do much. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards taking the Giants as well here. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Giants too. I think we're all on the same page here. I think um, I think Dable is a better coach than whoever. Who went to the Gi- to the Bears? Uh, it's the uh, um, the guy. Uh, fuck, dude, why do you guys always do this to me? You guys ask me questions and then I just completely Eberflus. Who yeah. the fuck is Matt Eberflus? He's the coach of the fucking uh, guys, you know. Where the fuck did he come from? Who has that name? That's horrible. <laughs> Actually, he looks like my, one of my finance guys. That's funny. Anyway, shout out to Toby Karn. What's up, dude? 
Uh, yeah, uh, he was the a- AP Assistant Coach of the Year. Uh, no, he wasn't. He was just nominated as such. He named his daughter Giada. <laughs> if that matters at all. Giada. Yeah, uh, we're moving on now. Uh, we yeah. got oh, Giada and Grace. That's, I mean, Grace, like, that's a nice name, but Giada. Sounds like, an, right, like, like on. something on a Stop. Taco Bell menu. Stop. Stop. We've got the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we don't know if it's a good team or not. This will be the test. Going up against the uh, one of the remaining uh, undefeated teams. Again, the Philadelphia Eagles. What's the spread on Philly is six and a half point favorites. Philly looks like a complete team because they, 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 they win it. They on really the do. Um... And Hertz just has that swagger. Um, but the Jaguars are fairly healthy, and, and, and they've been impressive for what they are. But I'm going to take Philadelphia on this. I, I, but the, the spread is a little... I'm going to take Philly. I think, it, I think I took the over on this game, but I think Philly stays undefeated. Yeah, the six and a half is tough. But... That's six and a half. That's the that's the tough part there. It's it's simply the 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 spread there for me that's keeping me. I mean, Philly's gonna win. It's are they going to win by a touchdown? Yeah. Ugh, gross. Um. Yeah, I think they are. I'm gonna take Philly because I got a lot of shares of uh, Jalen Hurts. So, uh, that that's just where I'm going. I don't I don't want to be on an island with uh, Jacksonville again. I've done it I think twice this year already and I think that's enough for me. <laughs> that's, en- uh, that's enough for me. <laughs> if, I mean home, it, it worked out one I mean one of the weeks I it worked out. So, yeah, that's something. Yeah, I picked him against the Chargers based on the spread. And then they ended up winning. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Do it, man. Do it. Go on an island. Be on an island. All right, I'll go on an island. There you go. You taking Jacksonville? Yep. Crazy motherfucker from Jacksonville. I'm going to call you guys a bunch of fools when I'm right. That's fair. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Scott, you're slacking now. I am now on three islands. Frodo is on three islands, and you have Seattle. Seattle. (laughs) Seattle. (laughs) Yep, you fucking do. Whatever. I'm drunk. (laughs) All right, we've got the New York Jets traveling to the powerhouse Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh's three-and-a-half-point favorites. Speaking of disappointing teams. Oh, my (laughs) God. I can't believe I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to take... What's the Jets spread? Uh, Pittsburgh is three-and-a-half-point favorites. Give me the Jets, because I think the Jets' offense is better than the Steelers. Now, I will say... We do believe... Zach Wilson will be the quarterback this week. Is it? Or is it Flacco? Uh, I, everything I keep hearing is that he's going to come back in week four. I thought he had to be out until after week four. No, he didn't uh, get put on IR. No, he, he, was, uh, he, he was kept off the pup list. Let me see here. Where do I have him? I have him in one of my dynasty leagues because I'm starting Flacco. The, I don't think um, he's starting Flacco. Coach expects week four return. That was one day day ago. If he puts him in, I'm gonna be pissed because God damn it. Um I, I don't know. Um You what? Know no, I I'll go Pittsburgh. I'll give it to Pittsburgh's defense. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it, I'll go Pittsburgh. Is uh, is Mika gonna play? Uh, I don't 
No, because I, I, was it? What was it? Me? Was it me or no? Or... He he went into concussion protocol. Oh, he's probably gonna miss it. I'm guessing. Like he put himself in. Like it wasn't during the game. He got he got a pretty nasty. Did, uh, did he go into he, regular concussion protocol or did he go into Tua concussion protocol? No, he would have still been the rest of the, play the rest of the season. Oh, okay. in Tua. No, and did he, you know the he got, time? He played. He played the rest of the game. Like he had no uh, effects. It wasn't until I want to say this morning that he started ha noticing effects, like like concussion feeling. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm reading that he was evaluated after the game, um, and I think he was probably like, you know, borderline. So then uh, when he reported to the team today, uh, that's probably when it was declared an official uh, concussion at that point. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm still. Um, uh, yeah, if I think. I want to say that if Flacco was playing, I would take the Jets, but I honestly don't know that I am. Um, I think I'd take the Steelers any, regardless. I think it's the Steelers. You guys know how much I love the Steelers. Yes. I can't be on an island with Jacksonville and the Jets <laughs> back to back. All right. Welcome to Night right, World. Field. We're, we're all going for Pittsburgh because I'm not putting myself in that. Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh. Uh, we're either all wrong or we're all right, so I'll take, I'll, I'll take that. Right, right, we're even on that, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, we've got the uh, post-beta launch Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> Why does that matter, Ray? You know Oh my god, did you see uh, Andy Holloway was talking about it? He's like, yeah, we were playing some Warzone and uh, waiting for uh, Cal Murray to hop on with us. <laughs> uh, but we got the uh, Cardinals going to go up against the Panthers. Panthers are currently one and a half point favorites. Ooh. Um, the Panthers? Or Cardinals were one and a half point favorites? Carolina. Give me Carolina. I think I'm going to take Carolina here. Take the Cardinals. The reason why is because even though the beta uh, the, um, tomorrow is uh, Season 5 Reloaded, and he's going to be unlocking some new guns. So no, see, give me the Panthers. True. Yeah. See, yeah. and I think that he is going to have a contractually obligated study session. During the time that uh, you know he's he would normally be playing Warzone, so uh, I, I think Kyler Murray's going to study up this time, you know, get his juice box and his fruit snacks, and he's going to go out there and do the hard work. I'm putting Scott on an island. What's up? Yes, NFC West Island. Yep. Uh, next up, we've got the uh, Crybaby in New England not playing against the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay is ten point favorites. Yeah. So I, so I've got to go first. I took Green Bay minus eleven. Give me Green Bay. Okay. Rick. I mean, Green Bay's going to win this game. It's just whether or not it's by 10 points. Yeah. I think it's going to be by more than 10 points. I'd take a 30 <laughs> point. Right. Like, like, this is... Yeah. It's... It, it's uh, uh, New England's defense is not good enough to slow them down completely. Uh, I, I, it's got to be Green Bay, I think. Green Bay? Uh, next up, we've got the uh, Russell Wilson. Let's ride. Let's ride. All the way to Las Vegas. Let's ride. Let's ride. And Las Vegas is two and a half point favorites. Yeah. Suck it, Broncos. Give me Raiders. Raiders. 
Raiders. They always played Broncos so, really tight. We have let's see week one. Week one, I voted for the chart or for Vegas based on the spread. Well, then on week two, we all said the Raiders. Week three, we Frodo and I said the the Raiders. So Scott's been the only one that hasn't been consistently on the Raiders for like the first time in forever. Right, I'm so fucking smart, but I'm gonna take the Raiders this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm just concerned if we all go Raiders, they're gonna lose and be zero and four. Right. Do you think that they're going to be 0-4, though? No. I don't think that Denver can... The only thing is, is Denver's defense is really fucking good. Okay, so how many games does Denver have to closely win or outright lose before, uh, their, uh, before Hackett is fired? I bet I, I, Hackett will make it through the season. You think he's going to go through the season no matter what? So if they yeah, get so they're, if they're 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 two and one right now. If they make it to uh, two and six, you think he's still got a job? Yeah, I do. Two and ten. That's a lot of games to if lose in a row. Win, yeah, if they win on a on a seven game losing streak at this point, okay, maybe. Yeah. But I just don't see that happening. Yeah. Yeah, it, especially if they clean up the mistakes that they've been making, like specifically the fucking clock management um, and the play calling. Um, yeah, but I'm 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 on the Raiders here. I think they're gonna I think I'm, they're I'm gonna back back. Something. Uh, so... Speaking of the Raiders, though, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that wide receiver's name that I like? That's uh, gonna be the guy this week. Good uh, uh, yeah, Matt Collins. Matt Collins. Matt Collins. Uh, sorry, yeah. Matt Collins. Matt Collins. Is, Matt uh, Collins. Yeah, he's uh, 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 with Hunter Renfro out this last week. Uh, Matt Collins. Matt Collins. Good God. Uh, it had ten targets, eight receptions for 158 yards. Went crazy. Plus, he had a touchdown. Um, but then, uh, but the week before that, he also had eight targets and five receptions. So I like the amount of targets that this guy is seeing on a week-to-week basis. Hunter Renfro might be back this week, so that obviously could take some some of the looks. Um, but uh, this kid is... Matt Collins is a, a bigger big, guy. He's more, more downfield than, than yep. just slant. He, he usually played outside. 6'4", 220 pounds. This dude, uh, uh, you know... Uh, He's, he's going to be playing opposite of Devontae Adams, so maybe that's why he's been getting all these looks right now, is that Adams is the one. Uh, taking all the coverage. Taking yeah. all of the coverage. So now all of a sudden, Mac Hollins has got the, got the shits. So um, I like this kid a lot. I, uh, I, think, he'll, I think he'll be... Uh, again, you're looking at projected points. He's going to have 3.4 points. But if you're looking at his actual function i think he's gonna have a i think he's gonna have an awesome week this week that's fair uh next up we've got uh kansas city going to tampa bay kansas city is two point favorites i think the uh, tampa bay is still missing a lot of their stuff they don't look like the same same team um, I'm going to take the Chiefs because I believe in the Chiefs more than I do the current state of the box. Yeah, I mean, I feel like KC is going to win this game. Well, one thing I do have to say, the Chiefs do not look like the same Chiefs without Tyreek Hill. They try to say it all, but they do not look anywhere near as explosive as they did before. Week one, they look pretty good. So I think if they can just get into a groove, I think they can be fine. It's just, it's just whether or not they can get back into that groove and and be able to move the ball all around the field. Yeah, big if. It's you just don't know. So uh, Frodo, you took uh, your Tom Brady's. 
No, I, I took, took uh, my Mahomes. Okay. So I'll, I'll I'll take I'll take Tampa Bay then. I'll go on an island here with uh, the Tom Brady Buccaneers. This is gonna be a good game. What uh, is this? Is this Sunday night game? Sunday night game. Sunday night game. Yeah, this will be a fun game. Oh, I guess the other thing that we do have to make mention about is this is supposed to be in Tampa Bay, but we played in Miami. Hurricane Hurricane Ian is uh, about to. Uh, 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 tea bag everybody in Florida. Yup, sweaty ball sack. Uh, yeah. So it's not known where this game is going to be played at yet. Uh, there's talk of it being in Minnesota. Um, it could also be in Tennessee. Uh, so it'll be somewhere else outside of Tampa Bay at this point. They're not. Uh, Tampa Bay is currently playing in my or practicing in Miami. So yeah, yeah, and uh, they're not gonna they're not gonna uh, uh, take it back and make this a Kansas City home game. You know that's that's no, not the way that it works. Will, it so, will not be played in Kansas City. That's the one city you know that it's not going to be played in. Um, so uh, it, it, it'll be a neutral field. Uh, is yeah. is the point? Um. So, yep. yeah. And then uh, Monday Night Football. We've got the Los Angeles Rams traveling to San Francisco. San Francisco is two and a half point favorites. This is uh, this is one where uh, the spread was a little bit surprising when we first looked at it. Uh, but then when you start to peel away the layers, it's uh, the lure of... Uh, uh, the Rams, uh, plus the recent shittiness of Jimmy Garoppolo in this last game. And to his credit, um, apparently he wasn't given a playbook even uh, this year until uh, last week, but uh, doesn't matter. It's the same, mostly the, the playbooks, same book that he's been playing. The playbooks for. don't make up for the fact that he missed... Completely didn't even look in Debo's direction when he was wide the fuck open. It yep. uh, doesn't change the fact that he overthrows everybody he ever fucking throws to right, or yes. throws it behind him that then causes a uh, interception or, you know, I don't know, fucking steps out of bounds and causes a safety. Hey, None of that was not having the playbook. I'm also, like, something that... Um, uh, uh, was really upsetting to me just aesthetically speaking was how how smiley he was after the game fucking pissed drove, me off drove me nuts man like like you just lost a game at least act a, a little bit um contrived i didn't it. play in the game and i was more pissed off than he was right and and maybe this is the fact that maybe he's pissed at san francisco for fucking hosing him but um uh, you're auditioning for your next job right now. Don't be happy that you guys lost. Um, and, uh, uh, okay, so Trent Williams also went down um, in this game, which is a big deal moving forward, specifically with regard yeah. to um, George Kittle. Uh, because Kittle, this was Kittle's first game back, and while I was hoping for a lot more from him from a uh, Jimmy Garoppolo-Kittle connection, um, it, it actually ended up being he was on blocking duty most of the time because Trent Williams went down. So, um, I, I and because Kittle is such a fucking good blocker, that's all they can use him as. Right, right. Um, he's also a really good receiver, though. So I feel like they should use him for that too. That's why I traded for. Him. I agree. I I fully agree. So, uh, two and a half points. So, at, at uh, on the surface, two and a half points seems like that's crazy that San Francisco is even uh, 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 a favorite in this. But at the same time, the Rams have not been great, right? I mean, oh, they haven't. Uh, this is this is one of the more disappointing teams in uh, in the league. So um, they get stomped by the Bills. They barely beat. Who was their week two? Uh, week two, Whoa. Atlanta. Atlanta. Yep. And uh, they didn't beat them by a crazy amount. Nope. Atlanta almost came back in that game, uh -huh. and then they didn't destroy the Cardinals last week, and they should have. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're a Cooper Cup owner, you were kind of kind of upset about this last week's game. 
um, I- I- except he saved you with some rushing. Um, he had a rushing 20-yard yeah. uh, rush for a touchdown. Other than that, he was only targeted six times uh, for 44 yards. Uh, four receptions for 44 yards. Um, so, obviously, Cooper Cup's awesome. You're not worried about that. But uh, in terms of uh, actual fantasy production, uh, he saved you with that rush. Um, yeah. Uh, Rich, I assume you're taking the 49ers, right? I am. Frodo, who are you going to take? Uh, that should have been the first one, but I'm going to go with Niners. Yeah, but we knew Rick was going to take the 49ers, so it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like me saying that you were going to take Miami. Yeah. Right. Uh, I am, uh, I'm going to take the Rams. Yeah. You are the West Coast Island. I am the West Coast Island. Honestly, I swear to God, that was why I picked the Rams. I wanted to be consistent. I wanted to be on one more island. I was looking at the schedule. I was like, that's the one I want to be on. I'm going to be on that island. Uh, here we go. Let's roll. Let's ride. Uh, you uh, you are on an island for... Th- oh, well, you kind of fucked it up. I did. Uh, because you also took Tampa Bay. Sure did. So you are on a, you, you are on a West Coast island and Tom Brady's nuts. <laughs> Yes, I am. Nice <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. That, that's all the games. I'm the reason why they're having marital troubles. Probably. Hey, so let me ask you guys this. Okay, so this came across my radar this last week, and I was wondering. This is this was this was a big deal to me. Um, what's your take on a trade capital on trade capital that's outside the league? So, for example, one, you uh, somebody pays you cold hard cash for one of your players or you know, whatever you know uh, uh, there's you know I'm gonna trade you this guy for this guy plus I'll flip you 20 bucks what's your take on that is that allowed is that not allowed or is that just sort of a, a, a baseball unwritten rule that you don't do that that's uh, that's a difficult one because that's almost it's not quite collusion, but it's, it's not, not quite collusion. not collusion. Uh, I don't know because it's kind of that gray area there. Like you're you're you're, you're getting capital in return. If you want to make that sacrifice, okay, but it, it benefits you. It didn't benefit your team, but it benefit, benefited the manager. Right. I feel like that's something that needs to be like discussed in like per league to like make sure that. Everybody in the league is okay with it prior to it being discussed uh, for a trade. Or, or, like, if it is discussed in a trade, it needs to be brought up to the league before a trade is completed. Right. So, like, right now, if you guys saw Cooper Cup get traded for Tyler Boyd, that would have to be It'd have to be noted in the chat. Like, I am trading Cooper Cup and Ty- for Tyler Boyd. And also a hundred dollars cash to blah blah blah. And as somebody looking in on that league, how like how does that how do you, how do you how do you how do you react to that? Say that well, your league hasn't had that conversation yet, because in all of our leagues we have not we had this had con- it. We, we have not had this conversation out loud, and. Um, and, and yet I've had a couple of trades that have come across my path where somebody has offered me, uh, an outside collateral. I don't think it's collusion because it's, it's as long as it's, as as long as it's noted to the league, like Brandon was really close to wanting to give me a hundred bucks for just for Debo. If he's like, Hey, I'll give you a hundred bucks for Debo Samuels. Fuck yeah. I'm taking a hundred bucks for Debo Samuels. Right. Right. So, it just has to be communicated to the league. It can't be like, oh yeah, we thought it was fair, but it has to be like noted somewhere in. So let's extrapolate chat. that out there then. So now he's paid a hundred dollars for Debo Samuel, and then he played. Is that it? That, that was in Dynasty, right? Yes. So, so and that, so and then he goes and he makes another fifty dollar. Uh, purchase of you know I don't know Patrick Mahomes and uh, uh, George Kittle, um, and then he goes and he spends another hundred dollars on 
I don't know, uh, Justin Jefferson. Um, and basically, low, you know, you fast forward over a couple of months or even, you know, two or three seasons on a same on the same dynasty team. And now all of a sudden he has purchased himself a number one contending team um, through through cash purposes. I'm broke as fuck. Like, I, I can't compete with that. I'm now all of a sudden I'm the <laughs> Oakland A's against the fucking New York Yankees. Like that right. it, it'd have to that be would ruin the game for me and I would leave that league. So yeah. if I would leave it at that point, then at what point is is it acceptable? That's my that that's what I'm getting at. So let me let me throw um, one more wrench into this. What about a cross league trade? So I'm gonna give you Saquon Barkley and Tyler Boyd in this league. And you That's give me, at that point. and you give me Cooper Cup in the other league. No, I, it has to be only for this one league. Otherwise, that exclusion, I think that would be illegal. I'd never go for it. It has to be self-contained in one league. I can't trade you because everyone else is not in that same league. I'm going to trade this guy for a kickback in another. No, fuck that shit. Rick, what's your take? It doesn't seem that I, far. It doesn't seem that far off to me than taking cash. And it's not. I don't know. That's that's such a gray area, though. When you're talking, can I tell you why I, mean, I think it's a gray area for you guys? Because it feels wrong, but it's not technically wrong, and that's like. That's like, uh, 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 what did Congress say? They said, you can't define porn, but when you see it, you know it. Like, that's what, that's what, that's what we've got going on here is we know it's collusion. We know that it's, should be against the rules, but it's not technically against the rules. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's one of those things. It's just when you're, when you're talking about something like this, it's like, it, it's in a league where where money is paid up front like that's the end of it you're trying to win the money at the end right so having an opportunity to just buy your way through it just seems like a seems like it shouldn't be allowed I think I agree with you um, and yet Weirdly enough, I think that a cross league trade seems better. Except uh, to me, I don't like I don't like either of them. But the cross league trade seems like a more um, gentlemanly uh, proposal, assuming that it is in fact across uh, good across. It's beneficial for all teams. Meaning, meaning right. the, the 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 problem is is when you're trading. When you're trading uh, uh, a blue chip, when you've got a shitty team trading their only good player in one league, yeah. and to uh, 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 to a different player in that league, and then in the other league they're getting a really good player from a really shitty team. Now all of a sudden again you're fucking with the balance of the game. This whole system is built on equity. And you start fucking with that balance, and it's wrong. I, it's it's it. I don't think that it should be allowed. I don't think outside. Yeah. If, if you got Fab, if you have players, um, and if you have in Dynasty trade picks, those are the only things that should be, um, uh, uh, uh commodities, uh, in this in, right. in this thing, uh, in 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 these trades. Uh, uh, however. Uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, maybe a punishment bet could also be in play. Like, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll let you shoot me ten times with the paintball gun um, to maybe balance out that. I don't know. Maybe that would work. But but I, yeah, that would be that would be different because that's like a purely. Uh, I don't know. The, again, it's kind of that same type of gray area, right? Right. So it feels wrong, right? It does. On the like, surface, I get it. on the surface, it, I can it, see it being okay if, like, say it's like a good, like, even trade. Like, hey, I really want, 
um, say, example, someone wanted uh, someone had Tyreek Hill, and I really wanted Tyreek Hill, and I gave them a good offer, and they still don't want to break them loose. I'm like, I go, it's a fucking straight up, like it's an even trade, both which ways, same the same trade that 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 you and I had, Scott. And I'm like, I really want them. I'll fucking give you fifty bucks, but it's a fair trade. That could that be okay? Like, because I mean, that's like that's I think pushing that over the edge a little bit, even though it's not like blatant. Like, just here's what I would say: is I would say that if we're gonna do uh, a cash offer trade, that there needs to be two other components to it. Number one, you have to get eighty percent approval from the league. And number two, there has to be a certain percentage that goes to the pot. If there's any cash exchange, there has to be a certain per- percentage. And it can't just be, you know, if it's if if, if the if it's ten dollars, uh, a minimum of ten dollars goes to the winner. That can't be the case because you've just loaded the pot for yourself theoretically. So it has to be a ten dollar additional tax goes to. Uh, you know the the losers pool no that wouldn't even work because then that's gonna help the other guy right like I, it's it's complicated it feels wrong i don't like it i don't think you should be allowed at all yeah oh no. i think it just i think it just, just, just complicates <laughs> i think it say? just complicates things more i said you missed the else. boat when i was trying to get terry kill <laughs> i know right it just complicates, and things really don't come across like that. I don't think that's something that'll even naturally come across often. It's just something that I was arose. looking at trying to make a a good balanced cross league trade, um, and and uh, it, it it even just putting it together, I felt gross about it. So I was like, that's what that's what put together this put this thought in my mind. Is I remember that. That Brandon was talking about paying cash for a player, and um, and then and then I, I, st- I was thinking about putting together a, a cross league trade, but I was like, that's it just feels wrong, especially when you're talking dynasty, you know, when you're mixing formats and you when you're mixing, you know, bad team and a good team, and uh, yeah, it gets too messy. I think same league, whatever your commodities are in that league, that's what you can trade. Fair enough. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right. So uh, we uh, uh, that is it for us for uh, week three uh, recap and uh, right because we just had week three football, right? Yeah. So uh, week yeah. four um, is going to be. Uh, uh, I'm I'm really excited about the uh, the 49ers game. Honestly, like that's the one I'm I'm looking forward to most because uh, I I think the implications of what. Uh, Jimmy G is going to do uh, is going to be huge this week. Like, how is he going to come out and play? I, I agree. So, if, um, it, if it looks the same as last week, I'm 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 going to be sad. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, can we all just remember that you guys wanted this two weeks ago? Not you personally, but you 49er fans, you 49er faithful, you you bang bang Niner gang. Like you guys all wanted this uh uh that y'all wanted uh, uh Jimmy G back on your team as a starter. Yep. But but now you got him. Good yep. luck guys. All right, so we will see you guys uh next week, all right? Peace. Good. Peace out. Later.